This is Exoscribe Radio, and you're listening to Kusha Karvandi. In today's podcast, I interview Dr. Anthony G. Beck. Dr. Beck practices an integrative medicine model called functional medicine. It deals primarily with prevention and the underlying causes of disease, rather than treating symptoms of disease. His programs are designed around an assessment of bodily systems and their interrelationships, as well as an emphasis on patient care rather than disease care. So we're here on Exoscribe Radio with our guest, Dr. Anthony G. Beck. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, welcome to Exoscribe Radio. So just to get us started, um, why don't you give the audience a little bit of a background about you and, uh, and your history? Oh, wow. How long, do, how long do we have? No, I'm just <laughs> Well, you know, you always got to gotta talk it up a little bit. Well, the, the, the clip notes on Dr. Anthony G. Beck is... Uh, I practice functional medicine. I've been doing that now for over two decades. So uh, I was an early adopter to a fantastic systems biology uh, that really emphasizes uh, several factors. And one is an embracement of each individual's biochemical and genetic uh, uniqueness. Uh, The next thing is, of course, an acknowledgement of the web-like interconnectivity of systems in the body. Everything is related and talks to each other and influences everything. There's a balance between internal and external factors, both what's going on inside of your body and then, of course, where I focus much of of my emphasis when I work with patients is on what we call environmental inputs and the things that you actually have direct control over that uh, influence not only your your life uh, indirectly but directly even down to gene expression themselves. The other thing is is I look at uh, uh, health as a positive vitality not just the absence of disease. So formally I'm a, a, a naturopathic doctor, a doctor of oriental medicine. I'm currently working on a doctorate in uh, health sciences and integrative health care with an emphasis in, in uh, epidemiology and chronic disease. So I focus my time on where 80 percent of healthcare expenditures in the United States occur, and that's in chronic disease. We fell miserably in the realms of diseases that plague us you know, for many, many uh, months and years, uh, as opposed to acute care. And so the difference for me and what I like people to understand is, is um, though I, I maintain a clinical practice in the state of Florida, and I have an office in, in uh, Las Vegas, but the, the difference here is, is that I do acute care. If somebody has, you know, a migraine or back pain, pain or, uh, you know, a, a splinter or different fun stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it really is uh, predominantly, you know, about chronic disease, things like diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis, allergies, things that people call depression, um, you know, lack of performance, fatigue, insomnia, gastrointestinal stuff. So I get to the real root causes of disease. Um, I hold uh, four national board certifications. I'm on uh, um, upwards of, of 10 professional medical organizations across the country. And um, at, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a board-certified human uh, being, and I have the challenges just like anybody else does. So uh, it really comes down to uh, you know hanging up the lab coat and stethoscope and being a real person talking on the level uh, of patients that they can understand, giving them far greater than the 7.6 minutes that you get when you go into a doctor's office. So that would, that would be the, uh, the, the sweet and condensed version of a little taste of... Uh, <laughs> Dr. Anthony G. Beck. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, that was great. So I, I know that you do a lot of stuff with epigenetics. What exactly is uh, epigenetics and this whole study of that? Sure. Well, th- in order to go into that, I, I like to give a little bit more background information. You'll, you'll deduce pretty, pretty quickly that this good old boy from North Carolina has what we call down there the gift of gab, and we like to talk. Generally, we're sipping on some tea and rocking a while on the porch when we do it, but um, so virtually, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a, a longer answer than the definition if you go to Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, right? um, here's the thing. In medical school, we're taught something called central dogma. This, this was a particular uh, you know, hypothesis by Watson and Crick. Okay? And what they did was they found out, oh, man, we have this double helix DNA structure, and we know it's inside the nucleus of a cell. Well, we think that, you know,
All right, we back? Yep, sorry about that. It's okay, it happens. I saw it flicker. I'll just pick up from there. You can snip it out. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> no, how it goes. All right, we good? Mm, looks like your video's not there. Let's see, be here. Do you can remember reset me? Oh, there we go. Perfect. All right, so... Basically, there's the premise of Central Dogma goes back to the 50s when it comes to two gentlemen called by the names of Watson and Crick. And they, when we found out that the human DNA was a double helix and was contained within the, the uh, nucleus of our cells, it, it basically came down to them postulating <coughs> excuse me, that our, we're basically a byproduct of our DNA. DNA is the sequence. It has a start-stop. Uh, uh, part to it, one at the beginning, one at the end, and we pull that RNA out of the DNA, and then that yields uh, the body to produce a protein, and it's going to do that spontaneously and beyond our control. So central dogma, which is actually interesting, the term that they came up with is dogma uh, means something that's based upon uh, you know, speculation or you know, religious uh, wiring without any scientific evidence. Now, how ironic that is. So I laugh and I tell people, well, little did I know I was being taught religion in medical school. But <laughs> um, So central dogma is a true statement. You can look that up, Watson Crick. But basically it said that we're, we become a byproduct of our genes. There's nothing that we can, we can do about it. And again, it was never submitted to anything more than a hypothesis. It's never been sent through scientific method. It hasn't been substantiated <clears throat> and proven scientifically. But it was adopted, and that was the whole mentality. So that's why most people, when they go to see a doc, they'll say, tell me about your family history. And because docs want to quickly arrive to a diagnosis, give you the pill for every ill, wish you well, and then move on to the next one. The turnstile approach to acute care medicine, I call it. And so what ends up happening is, is then... Science begins to progress. We have the Human Genome Project. We begin to look at a bunch of stuff, and we go, well, hold on a minute. <laughs> There's something above our genes. So just like we have our skin, and we have the epidermis and the dermis. I'm going to break this down and talk like we're, we're talking to uh, nine-year-olds. Epi basically means above. So epigenetics is above genetics. We actually now realize that genes have a tremendous amount of plasticity and that we can actually uh, manipulate their expression. So your genotype is everything coded to your DNA. That's everything about you. But then your phenotype is actually how it manifests or expresses. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So before we were stuck in uh, genotypic dogma, now we know, hold on a minute, we can, we can call, we, I use this term loosely, turn on or off genes. Uh, I just did a, a podcast uh, last night doing some myth busting on some stuff. <clears throat> and I was talking about, of course, how sun does not cause skin cancer. It's not the causative factor. It can contribute to a perfect storm and yield that. But um, in its involvement in vitamin D, vitamin D deficiency is, has been already connected to over three thousand that's three thousand genetic controls wow. so we know that nutrients have the ability to help us express positively or they can in their, their absence or overabundance can cause an expression of the genes because remember genes are just blueprints they are not hard you know burnt to disc one single right only discs they're writable and rewirable is what i say Sound like Elmer Fudd there. Okay? I'm trying not to get my country accent out here. So that's really what epigenetics is. If you To simplify it down to the simple thing is it is this study of the uh, environment and controls that we have on gene manifestation. That's really kind of a, a simplified way of doing it. That's great. No, that was a great explanation. So what do you think about this human genome project and, and what it's really about? Okay, I'm going to play my, my voice harp. <laughs> <Angels. laughs> it was fantastic, man. Talk about an enlightening thing. It's, it, it was kind of like, you know, Gutenberg and the printing press. It, it brought us out of the dark ages. Mm -hmm. You know, for a long time, uh, you just got whatever somebody in the pulpit uh, told you. 
But then all of a sudden, you know, when it's printed and it's to the masses and it's not against the law to have the word, if you will, then people began to go, well, hold on a second. We can think for ourselves. And that's, that's my equivalent um, to the understanding of the Human Genome Project. It unlocked us up. And we're still learning a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not to get into all the specifics of it, but I, I think it was just an, an amazing uh, thing. And I, I was around when, when the unfolding of it was occurring and uh, tracked all this stuff. And, of course, like a lot of people, we kind of get a little bit of our dip out of whatever's on the cover of Time magazine. And, of course, I also remember being the maverick out there going, hold on a second. You don't need to be eating no daggum, you know, 10 servings a whole grain a day. And fat doesn't make you fat. And cholesterol doesn't cause <laughs> virus. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, that's because he's a naturopath. He's a nut all that. You know, and I go, okay, that's fine. And, you know, and I tell people, mark me down as, as, as the goof, as the guy who's like, yeah. And then, you know, the naysayers will use words like tin hat and, and uh, you know, charlatan and snake oil and all that kind of fun stuff. And I, and I get it. It's just an absence of information. Um, so my point is the Human Genome Project changed a lot. And then here's the thing. Um, it, it's what you learn after you know it all that counts. And so that's my quest and continue to learn. But here's the cool thing. Now we actually are spinning off into something called nutrigenomics, right? So nutrigenomics is the influence of nutritional foods on that genomic expression, okay? So hence the term. So with, up in epigenetics, you have all kinds of stuff, how uh, bacteria can control or manifest genes, toxins, thoughts. Yep, there's a biology of, of belief. There's a lot of things that can influence the expression of your of your genes. So in nutrigenomics, we 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 study that and really get down into what we call personalized medicine, to where we can we can uh, and hopefully we that'll tie us into some testing and stuff that I do that really sets me apart from the vast majority of clinicians today, especially in your realm in, in uh, exercise, uh, performance, endurance, and strength coaching and all that kind of fun jazz. Yeah, I love so, what you do because what you're doing so, is you're getting real precision. You know what I've seen so many many trainers and, and even so many doctors do is they're all guessing it seems like you know you're not you don't really know until you know you do the testing and analysis that you're doing you know so could you tell me a little bit about some of the specific stuff that you do with your testing and analysis yeah sure and, and here's the thing when um when I was going uh, doing undergraduate Old Dominion University uh that's you know of course I was going to be a Navy pilot uh, but you know, that was the days of Top Gun, right? Everybody wanted to be Tom Cruise and, and, you know, goose and that kind of fun stuff. And, um, so the, the thing was, is then, you know, relationships change, people come to your life, you go, hold on a second, you know? And so, yeah, I, I, I was seduced by the matters of the heart. So I had to get a, a gear shift. So when I decided I wasn't going to do that, I, you know, I had to go through my, to, to my next, uh, uh, you know, segment, which was in uh, sports medicine, exercise fit. And I really embraced that. ODU had a really strong uh, ACSM lab there, so they dumped a lot of money into it, so we'll spend some time there, a lot of cool stuff. But the cool thing was, in science, and this is, and, and when I say the word science, it might be a different definition for different folks, um, and, and, and physicians, we're wired from the very beginning to study single bits of involvement. So when you do a study, that's the whole principle of clinical trials is you take one thing and you, you manipulate it and control the entire, you know, thing, try to get rid of all, all the, uh, all the variables. Well, the problem with that is, is you lose the sense of who they are. It's like chopping your toe off and giving it to a podiatrist and they're going to tell us all about this person. Well, it, it well, we know it's a toe. We know they were human, but it doesn't tell you about what, what, what did you, did you get this bunion because on a treadmill or from doing CrossFit or, you know, Broken Skull Ranch, you know what I'm talking about? So it, it really is different. So my point here is a lot of people do testing, the quote unquote testing, and they'll say, well, I went to my doc and he, he tested my thyroid or he tested this. Well, that's that big floating matzo ball is what I call it, and an assumption that they did the adequate testing. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's infinite variables based upon the individual that need to be taken into consideration. Okay. So when I look at someone, and this is what most functional medicine practitioners do, but I I take it to a pretty nth degree, is uh, I'll give you an example. If someone comes to me and says, hey, listen, I'm complaining of fatigue, insomnia, intermittent muscle skeletal pain. Poor sexual performance for dudes. It's you know erectile dysfunction for women. It's oh my you know my lady parts are dry. I'm really not interested. Right? Mm-hmm. You see these common profiles. 
So then what, what medicine tends to do is they start to dissect the body like we do in school and we divide it up into organs and we send a person to your urologist for this and your cardiologist for that and your neurologist for this and then all of them are looking at their system but they don't talk no, no one has a round table medicine and, and how it's paid for and orchestrated does not have that function and this is what's missing in people's understanding they assume that they go to all these competent board certified and their specialty specialists but guess what? They're not all talking. Your heart dude is going to talk to you about your heart and your vascularity, okay? Your, your, your neurologist is going to talk to you about your brain and that kind of stuff. You, you get my point? Mm -hmm. So testing is a comfort because it's trying to get information of something that does not literally have a voice, okay? It's like veterinary medicine. Can you, you know how hard that is? You know, to, to, a patient that literally can't tell you anything but, you know, something is uh, ow. So that's kind of like how it, the, the body is in a way, and I tell people, so testing is really important, and then uh, and it all comes down to who's going to pay for it, what's the time we're going to invest in it, is the status quo going to accept it and reimburse me for it? Well, that's where everything gets cloudy because third parties truly don't care. They're, they don't have the skin in the game like the patient does or like individuals like you who are working with uh, people to get their bodies to, to perform an optimal, Okay. So then you have some people that are doing testing that, like in sports labs and they're telling people we're going to measure your hydration level by your specific gravity in your urine and little do they know that they're out of their mind if they think that that's <laughs> yeah, you're going to determine function of water intracellularly in the body by specific gravity in the urine. It's not going to happen. Um, or they might just take a look at a, a CBC or a, meta, a comprehensive metabolic panel and some of these standard batteries of tests that we do in blood. Well, none of that tells me what your mitochondria are doing, right? So we, if we all go back to biology and we remember something called, you know, the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, TCA, mm -hmm. you know, it's what I call the, the suck, squeeze, bang, and blow, right? The eight-cylinder en engine of the mitochondria that actually provides that energy, which is related to all kinds of fun stuff. And we're, we're working with alanine and creatine and, and, and protein stuff and all these funny things we're trying to do. But you haven't even assessed the dog on engine. That's like looking at the outside of the car, getting in the cabin, going, okay, this, that, and the other. Uh, weigh the car. Well, you know, this car would normally, with a full tank of gas, that, that would weigh about this much. And uh, then you go to turn the engine on and and it doesn't work. I mean, you're going, hold on a second. It's a new car. It just came off the thing. It weighs itself. All the fuel must. They do a whole bunch of assumptives. Well, what if the weight of the car is in the trunk and it's not in the gas tank? What if the fuel's in the wrong place? Right? Wow. What 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 if there's what if, what if something got a hold of one of the the cables on the battery and not a hole in that? What what about the starter? What about you know all these different parts? It takes more to it. So you got to have a better assessment, especially if you want endurance. And performance because I, it shocks me that the vast majority of athletes, even in, in the NFL level, uh, uh, collegiate and, and Olympiads, I, I've seen and heard from these, these patients over the years. And then they see some of the stuff that I do and they go, yeah, we've never done that. And I go, but this is your citric acid cycle. We can start with citrate and we look at isocitrate and alpha ketoglutarate and succinate and malate, right? And we know that each one of those steps needs nutrients to, to fire, to move to the next step, and we know that there are certain things like metals and bacteria that prevent that next one, and you haven't assessed yours, and they go, well, no. So again, it's a different point of view. People work more macro, and they're counting how many grams of fat, and how many this, that, and the other, and okay, do I, am I keto or not? Am I you know, low fat or not? Do I need to do this or not? But they're not really getting down to deeper roots. So specifically, I look deeper. I really get down to levels of testing that are not otherwise seen out there in common practice. It's not that I'm the only one who can do it or has done it. I mean, I've learned too. Now, I've been teaching it now for a decade, but um, it's been around for a long time. And uh, it's just a matter of access for people. They're not aware of it. Why? Because it's not going to cost you 200 bucks, right? You're not going to just do a copay. So that's where the rubber hits the road. People talk about the term, well, access to healthcare. Well, that's code for who's going to pay for it. Everybody's got access, but it's a matter of who's going to pay for it. That's right. So if I work with an individual and they say, 
well, can I run through my insurance? And I go, yeah, but I'm not going to go to. I'm not going to do it. So I'll run the labs. They have to pay me for what I pay, you know, the, the, the labs. And then what they'll do is then I'll provide them the, the forms and then they can take it up with their third party person who's not the people that are sitting here trying to change a life. So I take that good old boy, you know, that uh, fixation of, of the people that just sit there and make policy out of our, our relationship. And that's foreign for people, you yeah. know. So hopefully that makes sense. My, my level of testing and interaction with that testing with uh, patients and individuals that I consult with uh, is dynamically different. It's, it's they're my boss and I work for you, okay? And so I believe what you tell me. And I'm not, we're not going to do it my way. I'm going to work you through your own individualized set of environmental inputs, really emphasizing your phenotype. How is this manifesting in your life? And I'm not subjugated to your genotype, not at all. We have a tremendous amount of control, but we need to get a sit rep. We got to figure out what's going on in there and take that data and translate it into solid corrective action. Make sense? Yeah. That's, so, that's rock and roll right there, baby. <laughs> exactly. So what does something like this cost on average and how often should someone do it? Okay, great question. Well, here's the thing. Like... <sighs> I, back when I, when I was uh, early on, um, when I was going to Old Dominion, that's in Norfolk, Virginia. Of course, that's just, I lived over in Virginia Beach, Virginia, right there on the ocean front on 34th Street in the Mayflower. Uh, pretty famous <laughs> little condo building there. But it was just down the road from a place called the Association for Research and Enlightenment. Now, that's, an, that's a little bit more in the fruity biscuit realms, but my mom was one of those fruity biscuits. <laughs> When I say fruity biscuits, when I'm talking about crystals and chakras and all that kind of crazy stuff. Okay, so you go, you know, you I went there and, and studied a whole bunch of fun stuff when it comes to holistic medicine and yeah, yeah. But the reason why I share that with you is because the thing is, is I, I found that there's a lot of people who, um, you know, were into something back then. It was actually called the quantum self. Now we've actually, in certain individuals that are on the internet and podcasting and Doing things that are in the biohacking world, as we as you would have it, um, are, are called the quantified self. So that's how old school I am. I was I was in it before they even add the the phi. It was just quantum, right? Okay. Um, so I definitely love and work with you know within the quantified self uh, you know, realm now, and uh, am considered a biohacker, which is actually a funny term because hack usually means a, a negative term. But what we're looking to do is do little things that we can optimize, little stuff that are outside the norm. So we call that a hack, kind of hacking into the system. So I dig that. So the point is, there are some of those individuals out there that are doing that. Uh, famous blogs, really smart fellows, uh, uh, athletes, and so forth. And then they're showing these tests that they'll do. And they'll refer to some of these, and they'll show all these vials of blood. Like, wow, this is the most comprehensive assessment test. And everybody goes, oh, Yeah. And it's like, oh, and it's $800, $900. And people are like, oh, my goodness, yeah, for that, it must be great. Well, then I go, um, not that it's impressive with all those vials, but I'm going to pull a lot of those vials. Plus, I'm going to take your tinkle. Plus, maybe take a poop sample. Plus, I'm going to take some of your spit sample. And it's not going to be $900. Not that I'm bragging about the cost, but it's, it's more comprehensive so to answer your question, generally it's a it's somewhere around the the eighteen to twenty one hundred dollars worth of, of lab testing. Now I wish I could do it for cheaper. I wish I had a, a a Gates Foundation, a philanthropy that I can just give this to everybody who has that desire to get out there and hit the open road and have, lift heavy things and set them down. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't. The good news is, is insurance will reimburse for a vast majority of it, so you can get reimbursement from it. But, the, but so yeah, it's it's an outlay. Now, the range is, and and then how often we do redo it is again. It's it's I'm never going to give the the, the 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 token answer because who are we talking about? Are we talking about um, a, a, a 28 year old uh, CrossFit person? Are we talking about a 34 year old? Uh, father of a uh, single dad of two who uh, you know has a blue collar job or are we talking about a woman who's an executive and wearing you know I mean everybody's different see because I don't treat disease I, people go well what can you do for the rheumatoid arthritis or insomnia or depression I go I, those are just all made up terms right I don't treat those I treat people so I'm more interested in the person 
And so we have to do an assessment of yourself and find out what your individual uniqueness warrants what we test. Because, man, my goodness, I mean, if somebody just wanted to do literally all the way from head to toe, all imaging, all lab tests and stuff like that, probably about, you know, about five or six grand. Okay, then, then, then we could just, okay, boom, put a stamp on it, and then we get a, 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 a huge amount of personalized data. Yeah. But that's not really realistic. Do I, have I had some patients that do that? Yes, I absolutely have, and it's actually more common than not. But the point is, the vast majority that will probably hear us you know, chatting or me chatting today is uh, there, you, you want to take a look at some baseline things in your blood and stuff. And matter of fact, I've actually got some stuff. I can, if you want to do a screen share, can you know, I can do that. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, kind of roll you through this. Let, let me give you an example here. Uh, let me come here to my little Skype screen share here and hit start. And I'll just kind of show you uh, like some of the differences. Okay. So you see yourself there? Are we looking good on these labs? Yep. <laughs> okay, cool. Nice. Uh, this is a particular patient. Now, a lot of this might look, this is a good starting point. This is a blood lab in a common panel that most people will see. So we're going to take a look at, of course, what your blood sugar is, things like your hemoglobin A1C, we're going to look at, uh, and I'm not going to get into a class on this virtually here, but yeah, we want to do a comprehensive metabolic panel. This is pretty, you know, status quo stuff when it comes to looking at the body. And I don't just go, okay, well, this is the range. Everything's in range. There's nothing wrong there. Well, that's where people get way too much comfort in the acute care model. Because remember, medicine today is what's the light going off? What's broken? How can we shut down physiology? I look for pre uh uh, pre things and, and stuff that are interrelated one to another. So liver panels and all that other kind of fun stuff. And I'm going to give you an example here in a second. So like this particular patient, okay, uh, it, was a, it was a female, uh, age uh, 37, okay. Mm -hmm. If you take a look, see normally like this particular marker here, ferritin, that's rarely ever pulled in conventional medicine. I, I just know vast majority of don't even know what the heck it is. They're taking a look at iron, iron saturation, uh, hemoglobin, that kind of fun stuff. Yep. Well, this was elevated, okay? Now, here's the cool thing about ferritin. It's an iron, uh, iron storage capacity in the body. It's really relevant in the realm that you're in because the thing is, is ferritin uh, has a direct uh, effect on thyroid function. Thyroid function, of course, governs a whole bunch of other stuff. If your ferritin is less than 70, thyroid is not going to express the correct genetic controls uh, in the body. You're going to have receptor issues. So you have to have adequate ferritin levels. Um, if it's too high, it can create an inflammatory case. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So again, that's one thing. that See, that was a clue that, thank goodness, we take a better profile. Then everybody starts getting in these lipid panels and all oh, my high cholesterol and all that myth and crap. They don't really realize because they never get to see these pages where you see this word that says C L uh, C A L C. Mm -hmm. That's that's short for calculated. In other words, that's a medical guesstimation. But people will get medication prescribed to them based upon a medical guesstimation. They don't know it, right? So this person goes, "Oh, your LDL is too high." Well, um, their cholesterol is less than two hundred, but they're, they're, they'll, they'll try to start treating that. And I'm going, "Well, hold on a minute." And so, long story short, you got to you look at this with the correct perspective. Then you know, uh, C-reactive protein inflammatory markers is important. So is homocysteine. I see a lot of people who are like, well, you know what, I want to I do better methylation or I want to reduce my risk of disease X, so I'm going to take a bunch of you know, folic acid. Well, you, if you do folic acid and you don't know your, your genetic predisposition or how you methylate, what your COMT is, your, your 1D1, and, and a lot of other you know, um, uh, genetic markers, you start pumping in folic acid into your body and you'll actually raise your homocysteine. Wow. Okay, because it, you'll get something called folate trapping. Um, it, it's a synergy between folate, B6, B12, iron. There's, there's, there's several factors in magnesium and stuff all included in there. So you can't treat labs. You have to treat people. You have to know more about them. Uh, here's, a, here's a thyroid panel that most people will never see. When you, the, the standard of care for primary care in most docs is you're going to go in, they're going to do a TSH and a total T4. So this person will go, yep, everything's fine. Doctor, check my uh, thyroid and everything's great. But they're still going, 
I'm still constipated. My hair's still falling out. I still feel cold. Um, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I don't have the energy. Yada, yada, yada. Well, that's because they don't take a look at these free fractions. You're free and unbound T3 and T4. But then there are some docs that know, well, oh, I'd take all that too. Well, guess what? If you'd have done all that, everything would have been normal. But when you, you kind of know, you know, things where I know, you got to take a look at antibodies to your own thyroid, like TPO, right, and TGA. This person has elevated thyroid antibodies. This is autoimmunity, okay? This is the body creating antibodies against itself. So you would do this full panel and say, well, it's not the thyroid. But those of us who go deeper, we go, oh, yes, it is. Wow. You see, just because of the type of lab testing that you desire to pull, when the body starts creating antibodies against itself, that's not a good thing. OK, we have. But then that doesn't tell us why. What could do this? Chemicals could do it. Gluten can do it. Nutritional deficiency of zinc, selenium, and B6 can do it. Iodine deficiency could do it. Right. You know, a parasite could do it. There's a lot of things. So you got to see, you got to know more about the patient. So I didn't just use go, Oh, well, thyroid antibodies. Um, I could, you know, tell you this particular person actually had a, a, a gluten sensitivity. So that's what that was. And then look at here, vitamin D, that thing I was just telling you about mm -hmm. at 46.5, this person is vitamin D deficient though. It's with it. See these parameters in, in the, uh, in this lab are not the typical or, or, or this tells you nothing 30 to 100. Think about it. If you know, in, in, in your job, well, do you want to make 30,000 a year or a hundred thousand a year doing the same job as another person? Right. Yeah. Okay. So don't get skewed on that. This is a sample sample population mm -hmm. of seemingly healthy people, but we do know that we need to have this greater than fifty or fifty five for thyroid function to work, for gene expression to work. It actually needs to be up closer to a uh, hundred if you're going to be anti cancerous or anti tumoral effects and things of that nature. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So again, this isn't flagged as being uh, deficient, but it certainly is deficient. And so this person's missing out on all the hormonal benefits because remember, 25 hydroxy vitamin D is a pro hormone, right? Yes. This is made when you know UV light hits the skin and interacts with uh, uh, seven uh, uh, dehydro uh, cholesterol, a derivative of cholesterol. So, long story short, you got to take a look at vitamin D. It's a cheap test, you know. Then we go on to a CBC. We take a look at fibrinogen, uh, which is another inflammatory marker, really specific to you, to your your market um, for sure. And in, in, in the populace that you work with, fibrinogen is really super important. Um, if, if your body's creating these, you know, this this type of activity, you're going to have a higher pre you know uh, predisposition to uh, um, uh, calcified you know injuries and stuff like that, and, and connected tissue problems. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff like that. Then we take a look at the urinalysis. Of course, that's all in there. So that's one particular thing just from a blood lab perspective, okay? But here's where the rubber really hits the road, okay? Remember that citric acid cycle I was talking about earlier? Yeah. And everybody is, you know, is talking about a uh, 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 ketogenic diet these days and stuff, which I think in, in, in certain places is fantastic. And again, I've been doing it before. It was cool. Mm -hmm. um, but if you remember, fats, proteins, and carbs, they can all make acetyl-CoA. You can make energy out of any of them. Make sense? Yep. So people are going, well, I'm going to start eating paleo because I want to act and eat like a caveman. So I'm not going to eat carbs. And it translates into eat all the protein that you want. But then they're still having a hard time reducing body fat and they're having insulin issues. Well, why, why do we see that? Why are we seeing a you know, problem with androgens and things in, in, in people that are bodybuilding and so forth? Well, guess what? It's a little process that happens in the liver called gluconeogenesis. Your body can make glucose without carbohydrates. It can do it from proteins. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So if you're consuming, uh, you know, 60 and 80 grams of protein at a whack, you might as well be eating carbs sometimes. Exactly. Because your body will make it. You see what I'm saying? So understanding basic uh, biochemistry is something that's missing out there. The things in the green here tell us are the stuff that are needed. If those are deficient, there's a blockage. Um, these are like heavy metals like arsenic, um, uh, antimony, and mercury that can block these kind of pathways. So this is an interface that I actually show with my patients. Um, again, it really comes down to understanding this process. You know, this is that eight-cylinder engine in your mitochondria and, and actually looking at these markers and seeing what engine, what, what uh, uh, cylinder in the engine is off. Like in this particular patient, it was uh, succinic acid, and there's reasons for that, okay? 
So you can see some of these um, nutritional compounds are similar, like iron, there's that ferritin and ferrous we were talking about, glutathione, vitamins B1, 2, and 3, manganese, magnesium. This is where they actually manifest. So we take a look at these kind of things. So and then beyond that, look, look how more depth people should go. It could be in the bowel. We should take a look at some markers to see if you have malabsorption going on in, in the gut, if you have a bacterial dysbiosis like this particular uh, patient had. You know, um, if you have fungal overgrowth, not being fooled by spitting in the water and seeing if it makes tentacles, you know, self home tests for yeast. That's ridiculous. Um, over here to the right, these are your neurotransmitters, right? This is in, in those who are biohacking or using nootropics or doing anything when it comes to cognitive in, in, uh, um, development. Well, my goodness, if, if you don't know what your neurotransmitters in, you're, you're taking a shot in the dark. I mean, how are you really? Guiding yourself just on symptomology, that's that's can be useful, but it's not going to pinpoint you. So this is the marker for serotonin. Uh, then we got the ones for epi and, and norepi. We have the ones for uh, for dopamine. I mean, I'm not getting into the lesson of this, but this is these are clues. This is the the who done it, the crime scene investigation, the CSI agent of what's really going on for you. People talk about well, it's a it's a it's a um, they have a a chemical imbalance in their brain. Okay, well, which chemical? Wouldn't that be useful to know, especially if you're going to take a medication for a symptom? We could do it there. Um, vitamin markers, like this particular person right here is significantly deficient in folate. This fulminant aminoglutamic acid or FIGLU, that's the um, uh, platinum standard for determining if you have a folate deficiency. Uh, methylmalonic acid, that's the one for B12. Some of these are for B1, 2, 3, and 6 their involvement to each other. These are the metabolites over here down to your mitochondria. We, we have a sample of their chemicals of what they're producing, right? Um, this uh, uh, HMG, right? And we start talking about, you know, keto acids and that kind of fun stuff. Uh, really important, what their blood sugar metabolism is, what they're doing with carbs, uh, what their fatty acid metabolism, what their toxins are, how their, their liver's processing things out. If you're taking anti-inflammatories to recover from strenuous workouts, and how's that impacting your liver and your gut? Isn't that crazy? Wow. See, this is the type of depth we can go. And then people are supplementing with, with amino acids and, and, and BCAAs and stuff. And well, guess what? You could be thrown off the balance. You just, you're just you just going off of what you read on bodybuilding.com or Live Strong or some biohacker's website. What worked for them? Well, what worked for them? <laughs> what about your, your genotype and your phenotype? <clears throat> what about your environmental inputs? What about your dietary stuff? So... Again, it might not be that you have you'd be off on your amino acids. Maybe it's your B vitamins, which regulate these doggone things in so many bio uh, pathways. What about your urea cycle and too much ammonia, um, nitric acid or a nitric oxide uh, cycle when it comes to citrulline and ornithine? Uh, are you consuming too much animal protein and your urea and your ammonia levels are high or are they too low? A lot of questions we can we can answer here. Right, you can really you know get support into these specific things. Um, then the non-essential amino acids, right? Then your amino, then your then your metabolites of glycine serine cycle. That's a really important thing to take a look at. Um, man, just so much stuff. These other uh, related markers. Uh, there's that beta alanine that's you know so popular nowadays in sports med. Um, then of course how you, you there, there's just so much fun stuff. Keep going here. What are, you know, people are, you know, fish oils, I'm a big proponent of it, right? But there's a balance. People think coconut does everything. I mean, my goodness, I think you can start running your car on coconut oil. You can, you know, cure <laughs> coconut oil. You can, you know, you know, free all the, 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 you know, the animals that in the, uh, in the, in the pet clinic on the coconut oil. Um, <laughs> fats are super important to the body. They're a fantastic fuel. But again, that's why my term and my program is called the balance protocol. There's got to be a method to get you to balance. And what you're eating has a direct impact on these fats, okay? So your ratio of 6 to 3, involvement of 9, mono and sats, saturated fats, right? There's the coconut and palm and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, then your, your delta-6 desaturates, it actually takes it through the pathways, okay? Cardiovascular risk. Arachidonic acid, right? Arachidonic acid is actually the precursor to your inflammatory chemicals like leukotrienes, prostaglandins, and cyclooxygenases, right? Wow. Um, if, 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 you're, if, you're, if your arachidonic acid is, is elevated or low, that's going to affect your body's response to things like pain and allergies and inflammation, right? Talk about some missing data. You, you picking up what I'm dropping? This is crazy. Yeah, this is great right? stuff. 
But then, then there's, okay, well, that all looks, you know, like, you know, Asian to me. Not to pick on Asians, but the thing is, is yeah, it, it's a different language, right? It's symbols. Well, what I do is I use these tools to walk patients through an understanding of the pathways in what we call in the country, we are talking pictures, okay? So these enzymes like Delta-60 saturase, Delta-5 saturase, Elong-ACE, right? And they're dependent upon these nutrients. If you don't have these nutrients, these enzymes aren't going to shift things like ALA from flax and good, you know, natural source, you know, or plant sources of, of omega-3s. Most people don't convert them down to the EPA and DHA that we need. Why? Well, because they're, they're, number one, it's an inefficient mechanism anyhow when you start trying to elongate these fats, but it's nutrient dependent, like paradoxal 5 phosphate B6. You're taking supplements, and if it's a paradoxal hydrochloride or something like that, you're wasting your time. The people who formulate that just don't know what's going on. They're just slapping in something there made from coal tar. So you got to have the activated form of B6. If you don't, you take the other one, it's magnesium dependent. So here you are trying to take B6 without magnesium, and now you're inducing a deficiency in magnesium. You, you see what I'm saying? So in other words, there's this dance, this waltz, this symphony that has to occur that most dietitians, practitioners, and stuff like that, they don't have access to testing because they're not a licensed practitioner. They talk in generalities, which don't get me wrong, I know a lot of them are fantastic, brilliant people, even within the realms of functional medicine. My point is that if you really are serious about getting to an understanding of you, not what's in the books, not what your neighbor says who's, who's doing selling multi-level marketing stuff, not to what some gym head said who's you know could literally bench press me with his thumb. I'm simply saying that you, there's greater depths of information that people have just never been made aware of. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it, it's a really cool thing for me. I enjoy it. I, I, what I'm trying to do uh, is encourage people to, to look outside of uh, what's presented to them and look inside of self. You know, I'm do the opposite. You know, look inside the box. I want you to look out. You know, to be out of the box. I want you to come back in the box. There's a lot of comfort <laughs> and funness in here. You know, let's go for it. So th that's really what it comes down to. You got to know personalized data that embraces a broad scope of uh, of, of areas and systems that are all interconnected. It, it, it matters. Your gut, your 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 inner tube, the hooter to the tutor. There's so much chemistry in there. It's unbelievable. People want to take vitamin C to boost their immune system. And I'm going, hold on a minute. Your, your gut's 70 and 80% of it. Why aren't you putting good bacteria in there? Exactly. So it's just little stuff. I mean, we could talk and have fun forever, but, you know, I'm not a purist. You know, like I said, I'm a good boy from North Carolina. Gluten's a big problem out there, but do I eat gluten? Yeah. Do I enjoy a cup of coffee? Yeah. You know, what, 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 you know what, do I like a cocktail? Yeah. You know, but do I work out four days a week? Not on your life. <laughs> you see? Um, I like to play and have fun. You know, I like obstacle courses and races and things like that. Uh, I don't like to just sling kettlebells. But if that's your deal, that's cool. Everybody's life is different. You can embrace being a category of one. That's what I tell people. And if you do, then you'll really want to get into what your biomarkers are, what your labs are doing. Really embrace the understandings of epigenetics, nutrigenomics. And it really ties in. But at the end of the day, I don't want to do what you do. I love your method. I love how you approach it. That's a realm that, as a, as a clinician, I don't have a desire to personally do. But it's a part of this creating this global approach for the individual. You see? Exactly. So we all have our part. We all have our part. Exactly. And I love what you're doing because there's. I feel like, uh, kind of like you said earlier, there's a lot of things that people – take for granted. They think that they can never get too much, you know, of, of uh, B vitamins or they can never get too much of amino acids. Um, they think oh, those boy. things are 100% safe. And yeah, and the next thing you know, you, you could be throwing everything off. Yeah. And so then people say, well, my doc just says I have expensive ear. And I go, well, they might be right. But, you know, <laughs> not just, because, you see what I'm saying? Um, you, you really got to pinpoint. There's tons of tests, man. We can, we can do a blood draw, spin off your lymphocytes, grow them in culture, and then I can tell you what the nutrients are doing inside of your cells. Yeah. I can take your urine. I can tell you what they're doing post-metabolic, right? Mm -hmm. I can do testing in, in your gut and see if you're even absorbing them. Again, you, you got to find out what it all did. I mean, you, it's just like a professional football team. You know, you've got 
the players on offense and defense. Then you got special teams. Then you got coaches for those teams. And then those got to correlate with the other team. And then you got the coach. And then you got to the manager. You know, I mean, it's a symphony, man. It is. You're right. And uh, if you think you can just roll into the vitamin shop or GNC or go to a blog and get it, okay, you'll get there. And that's fine. There's a lot that you can do. But, man, it, it's all in how, how, what you want. Now, performance, that's a different realm. I'm about being able to have a, a, a just a fantastic life, one that will get you to be at least a century old, prevent chronic disease, opt out of our broken A healthcare system, and just get your quality of life up. Okay, Whether you want to PR better or shave time off of your run, I'm not the man to, to work with you on the field to do that. That's just not my gig. But if you want the most out of the machine, if you want to you know, refine it, that's it. So that's why I think you know we could provide a real good synergy working with some folks. Yeah, put, absolutely. Put a plug in for that. So hopefully that all stuff makes sense. And I'm long-winded about it, but I'm passionate. I love it. I, I just want to free people's mind, <clears throat> you know, bring them to, uh, to a, 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 an age of enlightenment and, and realize that it, it's not that crazy. And uh, yeah, it's a little investment, but man, uh, once you get it, then you can measure it, and then re- you know what I call rinse, lather, and repeat. You know, maybe four to six months later, and then you can truly quantify. Mm-hmm. You know, is your is your training getting what you're doing? And then identify things. Why can't I, you know, have quite that much, you know, of a difference? Well, maybe it's something going on in the mind. You know, we can exactly. look deeper and find out. Exactly. Pretty, man, lots of fun. So, how can someone do it? You know, remotely. Like, let's say. If I live here in San Diego, how would I go about doing this test with you and getting it analyzed? Well, the best way to do it is, I mean, within, you know, just, just uh, you, you can hire me as a consultant. You know, it's DrAnthonyGbeck.com, D-R-A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-G, Bravo, Echo, Charlie, Kilo, dot com, DrAnthonyGbeck.com. Uh, you can send me a note there. They can come work with you. You can contact me and refer a patient. Um, and then we consult. We can do this face-to-face, you know, via Skype. Um, we, we, it starts with just a... A dialogue, you know, figuring out well, what your goals are. Remember, because I want to just do you. I'm just not a place that you you roll up to and say, hey, take my blood and give me some information. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to stylize the issue. So they can contact me that way. And then, uh, you know, I can uh, get them scripts to go to a local lab, um, like LabCorp. You know, i got one in every state. Yep. And uh, they can go there, draw the, the do those results. They'll send them to me, and then we get back together and we go over them. If we need to do some of these other specialty labs, like you you saw there, mm-hmm. uh, then basically I'll contact my lab. They'll send them a, a, a test kit. They'll get that in the mail. They'll go to another draw center and get you know the blood taken. They collect their tinkle in the morning by themselves. Um, really self steering, cool stuff. It's not logistically that difficult. But it's not like, you know, someone's going to show up at your doorstep on a drone like Amazon, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to do your biomarkers. In fact, I should call at Amazon. Maybe we should work on that. Yeah, you should. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's how we do it. So we can work virtually this way because I'm not, per, you know, engaging in a, a doctor-patient relationship per se. It's more of a consultant. Um, and so that I, I, you know, I always recommend people get their, their physical exams and get hands-on with your clinicians. This is not alternative method. It's not a us versus them. It's not a this or that. It's actually an embracement of all of it. And you want to have competent care. I mean, healthcare is really, I just watched a show yesterday and you see the show, the doctors Mm -hmm. and now they have an app, you know, you basically FaceTime with some doc you've never met before. And this lady was on there and she goes, okay, well I've had this thing. And he goes, well, Hey, thanks for calling, you know, dial a doc or whatever the heck it was. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was for her migraines. And he says, okay, well I'm going to prescribe. She's complaining about her nausea associated with her migraines. And well, I'm already taking a trip tan, some Imitrex for my pain, but it's not doing anything for my nausea. And he goes, okay, well let me give you a prescription for Zofran. Okay. Okay, great. Well, it's been nice working with you and this, that, and the other. I mean, talk about making health. I really do believe we're going to get down to two minute docs. You're going to fill out a bunch of stuff in, 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 like you're applying for a job at Target or Walmart in the <laughs> lobby, and it's going to spit out stuff, and then that's going to be their information. It's going to get even colder and less hands-on. You're right. Oh, sorry to ramble on that, but that just happened to me yesterday. I was a little goofy. No, um, I'm not going to do that. You see me? We're going to sit here, and we're going to, we're going to turn a 20-minute conversation into an hour, and we're going, to, we're going to share some real data and, and embrace ourselves and say, you know what? It's about me. You know, be focused on you. You don't have to be self-centered. That's kind of you know condescending, but be, be focused on you. Put the, put the proverbial you know uh, oxygen mask on yourself first. 
and then you can help those around you, you see? Mm -hmm. So the people can get a hold of me very easily. Uh, I've been doing this now for a long time. For the last uh, eight years, I've been traveling and teaching other doctors how to implement my balance, program, uh, balance protocol program into their clinical practice. So uh, I've got a little, uh, little experience on the belt to be able to work virtually is the take home. That's perfect, perfect. Because you know, <laughs> one thing I'd really like to see is really the, the standard for the industry for, for personal trainers and practitioners to you know, really be baking this into their assessment process to really create real precision and not be guessing with their clients when it comes to yeah. their, their health and fat loss. Well, that's what I shared with you when we were talking before is, is uh, you know, two little snippets behind the, the veil a little bit of Dr. Beck is um, I started uh, in food and beverage management when I was young because my mom managed hotels, so I was a chef for 10 years. And then towards the end of that iteration back in uh, 93, that's when I began to become a, a personal trainer and I actually did that for another 10 that's years, right. um, working through medical school and that fun stuff. So I'm very familiar with the realm. Um, I've managed gems and including valleys and golds and all kinds of fun stuff in <laughs> those places, you know, little plug. But um, so yeah, I know what it's like to move the pens, uh, adjust the seats, and count to eight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sit in that uncomfortable chair in the office and try to get people to eat right. Um, so trainers are fantastic, but the trouble is. There's a difference, just like coming out of medical school, you're book smart versus getting out there and getting where the real knowledge. See, my patients yeah. have, have been my greatest teachers. Yeah. And when you when you 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 go through programs for strength and conditioning and different fun stuff like that, you know, I'm I'm I work with all those groups too. I'm in the Facebook uh, forums with them. The difference is is point of view. And see, when you come from a disease, you know, or chronic disease resolution mindset versus just a structural human performance mindset, it is a little different. Yeah. And then you, you subscribe to all these. I've read a whole bunch of books. You can probably see a bunch of them behind me. Um, having a, a, a clinical practice view in combination with the sports med exercise or uh, fizz stuff is um, a different perspective. And I really have this quest to kind of go back to some of my roots that you know put food on the table for me for such a long time mm -hmm. and help trainers. Uh, learn these things. I, I actually even do webinars and seminars both on site and virtually like this so that way they can learn about these tests, understand these pathways better, talk and engage their patients and quite frankly become uh, 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 greater levels of monetization And because quite frankly you never want to be bashful for getting reimbursement for your professional development. I mean, I know I've put in hundreds of thousands of dollars and trainers, you do too, and then your, your continuing education requirements, well, that's kind of how it comes down to play. So I, I, have, I have a real soft uh, and warm spot for, for trainers and, and helping them expand their knowledge in what I'm doing. So awesome. they can feel free to reach out too. Awesome. Perfect. Well, uh, I really want to thank you for, uh, for you know, really blowing my mind today with, uh, <laughs> you know, with, with, with all these truth bombs. So, well, life is fantastic, man. We have to share the love. We need to stop worrying about how big our biceps are and how much we can squat and how many times we do kettlebells. <laughs> I'm right. gonna, I'm gonna save you the trouble and tell you you'll, you'll kick my ass, gate, uh and all of that <laughs> stuff, right? But if you, but if you want to sleep better, if you want greater levels of energy, if you want to, you know, get your metabolics good, if you want to resolve allergies and fatigue and insomnia and gastrointestinal stuff and whatever. I'm your man, right? Let's go sweat together. But uh, I, I need I need uh, some body fluid samples. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Any any other closing remarks for the audience today? Um. No. Just uh, live life in balance. That's the thing. You don't have to be perfect, but get some knowledge about you. Embrace yourself as a category of one, and that's where you'll truly uh, accelerate and get the most out of life. Awesome. Thanks again, Doctor Beck. You're welcome, man. Thank you so much. 